Well, Liberia has been hard hit by Ebola outbreak. Just a few days ago, viewers Mariama Diallo had an opportunity to sit down with Jeremiah Solente, the Liberian ambassador to the U.S., who addressed his country's immediate needs as it deals with the deadly crisis. Liberia comes out of 14 years of war where uh, the infrastructure is broken, uh, roads, the health care system, educational system, all of these things were affected and the country was just picking up uh, with relative peace and stability trying to build those infrastructure. Now with the Ebola hit, uh, we, we lack the basic necessities to be able to deal with that. Um, in terms of transporting affected people from the different communities to containment centers, in fact we need more containment centers, we need more beds, we need uh, uh, ambulances to take people from the communities to, to the treatment centers, we need to train more uh, contact tracing agents, we need to train more community health workers. Part of the reason why the Ebola is, is spreading so fast in, in Liberia is due to the lack of ambulances. And so when affected people ride a public transportation or ride a taxi or the bus, and a group of people unknowingly ride the same taxi to get infected. So that, that, that is part of the reason why this thing is so prevalent in the cities. Secondly, the commitment we appreciate, but it's, it's time bound. It's, it's, if, if you commit whatever uh, your country or your organization is committing to the Ebola, can we have it now? Well, for more insight on the Ebola crisis, we're joined by Dr. Akwea Asari, a commissioner from the Washington, D.C. Mayor's Office on African Affairs, who specializes in psychiatry, health policy, and global affairs. Dr. Chinua Akukwe is a professor of global health and community preventive health at George Washington University. And also with us today is Africa 54 health correspondent, Lino Mudu, who has been following the outbreak since it was first reported in March. I want to thank you very much for being here. Thank Most welcome. So now, Dr. Asari, first, let me just go back to what happened uh, yesterday. The gentleman in uh, Texas died, and, and definitely there's conversation going on everywhere in Africa and even here among the African uh, community members. Was he given the appropriate medication? Because people are saying, why did he die? And the other people haven't died mm -hmm. who have been brought in. Right. He was given appropriate medication. The first time when he went to the hospital and they, dis they discharged him, when he came back and they realized that he was showing symptoms of this illness, they brought in everything that they needed to do to take care of him. He was actually even given uh, the vaccine that was also given to the individual journalist who was in Nebraska. So everything was done for him. He had the physicians, he had the nurses, everybody around the clock it was taken care of. However, perhaps the issue is those two days when he was not being seen, when the virus was just becoming more and more virulent within him, perhaps that's what really led to his demise, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Akukwe, you know, some are saying, why did he travel? Uh, and they knew he probably had Ebola, but he was checked, probably the temperature was taken. There was no sign of that. So what does that tell us about the efficacy of that temperature check and any other checks that are being put in place now? Yeah, I, th I think we already know that those, the efficacy of those checks is reasonably high but not foolproof. And we've also had reports of people taking some anti, uh, to some medicines to make sure that if they have fever that it doesn't show up in, in screening. But then when you are dealing with a clinical issue, you never know what would be the clinical cost. And I think with uh, the Liberian National, uh, it's very clear that until he landed in Dallas and went home and met with mem members of his family, he wasn't really sick. Otherwise, there were multiple opportunities from the screening in Monrovia to the one in Brussels, the one in, uh, in uh, Dallas Airport, Washington, that nobody actually thought that he was sick. So it just tells you that when you are dealing with any specific case, that uh, anything can happen at any time. But I'm confident that until he got sick in Dallas, that he probably didn't know that he was sick. Mm -hmm. Now, Lino, as a person who's been covering this, uh, you've been listening very closely to what's happening on the ground. What are you hearing at the main 
concerns of the people in those countries affected? Are they confident this thing is going to be contained or are they even panicking even more now? People are fearful. People are panicking. They don't know. A lot of people still do not even understand what is Ebola. You know, there are so many misconceptions around this condition, this disease. And uh, I think that the, the most important aspect of, for a lot of people is communication and awareness. They want to understand what is going on. They also want to feel like if they feel feel ill or they have the symptoms, they can have access to the appropriate care, which is very scarce in some, in some settings, you know, because the health system is very mm -hmm. weak in some of the countries and yeah. uh, people are very fearful. Well, and there's good reasons to be fearful.